Welcome to the Continuum Lab. Today I'm adding another new instrument to the Continuum Lab instrument kit, also known as the Click. Well, actually, the last couple of videos have been about entirely new instrument designs, but this one's more kind of an upgrade to a classic. The reason why I'm revisiting this now is, of course, that I'm preparing for the launch of the Click. And this membrane instrument is one of the instruments that come pre-programmed on the included microcontroller. So I updated the design with some 3D printed parts and also upgraded the software to allow for up to eight separate drums. As always, you don't really need a 3D printer to make this. It's pretty simple to DIY. There will be a full tutorial here on the channel on how to make this using the Click, both with and without 3D prints. I do have some news about the launch of the kit and about the ContinuumLab.com webshop, which I will put at the end of the video. But first, let's talk about this. The very first prototype that I made of this kind of uh, membrane instrument was made out of tin cans. Small tomato sauce tin cans, as I recall, had a suitable diameter. Version 2 was made out of PVC pipe. That was early 2018 and I managed to get some video of that. More recently, in my workshops at schools, we've used corrugated cardboard, which is awesome for prototyping, but I've also used pre-made cardboard tubes from a roll of fabric, as well as other materials. My point is that you can make this instrument out of basically anything, as long as you can shape it into a cylinder with more or less the right dimensions, and which is strong enough to withstand the tension from the membrane itself. You could build it out of clay or blow it out of glass if you have the patience and the skills. I've developed these 3D printable models to make the process easier and you can combine these in any way you like, different sizes or all the same, square, round, long, short, whatever. This pattern is just the first thing I came up with. Now you've probably noticed that I'm calling these individual units drums, but even though the membrane makes it look kind of like a drum, I realized right away that this was much more than just a percussion instrument. First of all, this instrument doesn't actually measure impact at all. Inside each drum, for lack of a better word, is a CNY70 sensor module from the Continuum Lab instrument kit. This is an optical sensor, which is really two components in one. On one side, there's an infrared LED, which shines light outward. And next to that is a phototransistor, which measures the reflected light from whatever is in front of the sensor. The CNY70 is an awesome little sensor. It does need some extra components to function, which is why I made the sensor modules. This is the same module which is used in the click breadth sensors, and it connects easily to the breakout board using this triple DuPont cable. All of this comes included in the Continuum Lab instrument kit. In fact, there are 10 of these modules in the kit, enough to make any three of the click instruments. Anyway, back to the instrument. So, rather than measure impact directly, the CNY70 is constantly measuring the distance to the membrane many times per second and then the click software is interpreting that data to decide what to do. I've implemented two different interpretations in the click and they can be selected by just inserting a jumper on the click breakout board. So that also means that this instrument has two different options for output. There's a percussion type output which outputs a note on signal with velocity and then there's a continuous type output which has a note on and note off, but then controls the volume of each voice individually from the individual sensors. The second option is a bit more complex because I'm actually using several MIDI channels to make it work so that I can separate out the volume, but I think it's really worth it. As for the hardware setup, like the distance between the sensor and the membrane and all that, there are tons of different ways of doing it but I've been mostly working with two different setups to go with the two different kinds of output. For the percussion type setup, I have been placing the membrane very close to the sensor so that the travel is short. This is practical if you only care about the initial impact and then you apply that to a MIDI velocity value like for percussion. The other setup is for the continuous volume controlled mode, so it makes sense to have some more distance to the membrane with more room to play. And it actually gets more complex than that even, because with more distance to the membrane, you need a more reflective membrane to get enough resolution on the sensor. And vice versa, with shorter travel, you need a darker balloon. And of course, you need to have a black balloon on there anyway, because they're generally the only ones that are opaque enough to block ambient light. So I've often used two separate layers, white on the inside, black on the outside. 
I get into this in more detail in the click tutorial for this instrument which will be coming out very soon. Now honestly I prefer the long travel version always, it's just more stable and gives better resolution. The only thing that's really better about the short travel version is that you can make it with a single black balloon. But spoiler alert, while I was filming the tutorial for the membrane instrument I actually discovered a way to make the long travel version work with just a single balloon as well. It's embarrassingly simple and obvious. You just get a black balloon but with a white print on it and then you bounce the sensor light off of the print. Duh. It took me way too long and too many wasted white balloons to discover that. Anyway, water under the bridge. Under the membrane. Membranes under the bridge? Whatever. I'm actually thinking of having some black balloons made with the click logo printed on there in white. But for now I'm making do with these pirate themed balloons which work nicely. The membrane instrument can already be found in the shop at continuumlab.com and I think before I open for business I should probably try to explain uh, how that shop is going to work in general terms. So just like in the previous video where I specified the full list of instruments that you'll be able to make using the Continuum Lab instrument kit, link in the description, in this video I'm going to talk about the options for shopping. The first batch of 10 kits will be sold exclusively together with an instrument. Yes, that means a prototype instrument, just like the ones in these click videos, put together by myself for you. Plus the full kit itself, of course, which has enough boards and components to make any three click instruments and then some. So once I sell those 10 kits, then I'll reevaluate possibly uh, start expanding the kit with some more instruments like I mentioned in the previous video. The end goal to this whole process, if everything goes well, is that I'll be able to offer just the standalone kits at an affordable price point. Selling the instruments is really just my way of trying to make a larger return on my investment for these first few batches. Uh, so I'm investing some extra time in each sale and you're getting a cool, fully functional, unique prototype MIDI instrument. That way, hopefully, I'll be able to gather some capital to be able to start buying larger batches and maybe even uh, get someone to help me solder and test everything. Anyway, that's the setup that I've decided to start with for the shop and then I'll just see what works as things progress. In other news, if you go to continuumlab.com right now and look in the shop, you'll see that there's also another new item in there which I want to explain a little bit now that I have your attention and that's the online consult or class. I mean, I guess that's actually pretty self-explanatory really, but let me give you some background for it. I've been contacted quite a few times over the past few months by people who've seen the Continuum Lab videos and want to ask me questions about electronics or code or sensor design, or they want to consult or collaborate with me on some MIDI instrument related project. Now, while I am flattered and in some cases really intrigued, my current situation doesn't really let me donate much time to other people's projects. Financially, the Continuum Lab is running on fumes right now. Ever since this whole COVID situation cancelled all of my Continuum Lab workshop plans, I've been scrambling to develop this other side of my activities, the Continuum Lab Instrument Kit. So while I love to be helpful, and I will continue to be helpful here in the comment section with short replies, uh, not to mention all the content of the actual videos, of course, um, from now on, if you want to really ask me stuff in depth, then I'll be happy to take your call, but for a fee. We'll call it a consult or a class, depending on what you're looking for. I should point out that apart from being a musician and inventor, I'm also a certified saxophone and music teacher from the Royal Conservatoire in The Hague. On the other hand, in design, coding and electronics, I have no formal title or diploma of any kind, because I am completely self-taught. So I will repeat the disclaimer, which is also in the shop. It goes like this. There are many topics related to MIDI controllers that I know nothing about. If you need some context for what I do know, then have a look through the videos here on the Continuum Lab channel. I specialize in making original MIDI instrument prototypes and DIY sensors, sometimes with 3D printing. At the present time, I do not own a single storeboard controller of any kind. 
I don't know much, if anything, about brand keyboards or other controllers, but I do know how to replicate much of their functionality using simple parts and components. So please keep that in mind, there are no refunds on the classes, so it's up to you to know a little bit about what I do here in the Continuum Lab and what I don't do before you click buy. Take care until next time, and I'll see you in the Continuum.